Hey guys, you're still tuned in here with us at VBuzz with Ruben and myself, yeah. Jay Walia. Now, according to Psychology Today, research shows that many people struggle with forgiveness oh because yeah. it is perceived to be a sign of weakness. And you know, we, we hear this from time to yeah. time as well. Well, Mahatma Gandhi would back to differ. <laughs> One of the many gems of wisdom he imparted on the world before his death is this quote. The weak can never forgive. Forgiveness is an attribute of the strong, and rightfully said as well. Gandhi may have had a point because there has been a wealth of scientific research mm. into the link between forgiveness and health, and have found that the act of forgiveness can lower the risk of heart wow. attacks, improve cholesterol levels and sleep, reduce pain, blood pressure, and levels of anxiety, wow. depression, and stress just by forgiving mm. itself. Since we are in the season of giving, we're sitting down with consultant and trainer Sheila Singham of Human Equation to find out how we can begin the process of forgiveness. Welcome back to Vibas, Sheila. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, Sheila. And you know, the, 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 the biggest question I think we should all ask is, why is it that we actually struggle so much with forgiveness? I guess one of the things, is, as you mentioned earlier, Jay, is that um, forgiving someone, there's a perception of weakness attached mm -hmm. to it. Mm. It's like, I gave in, yeah. you know? And mm -hmm. the human ego is very strong. Exactly. It's oh. always about, uh, no, I need to win, yeah. right? That there's pride. Mm. And also in, in seeing that you, you perceive that somebody else has won uh -huh. in, in sort of an altercation or a situation. Again, there's that belief as well. Where do we inherit beliefs? We inherit it from various sources, yeah. people, something we read. You know, and, and the question I want to ask is why can't people take on Mahatma, Gan uh, Mahatma yeah. Gandhi's yeah. belief as opposed to some belief, some random belief that they picked up from someone that says, oh, you know, if you forgive, that means you're weak. You're weak you know? yeah. Yeah. So these are the reasons. It's about the belief system. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's about the ego. Um, it's also about like wanting a sense of justice. Mm. You know, I, I need to have justice. I cannot forgive you until I get justice. Yeah. And another thing also, it's about a distortion. Oh. You know, distortion meaning that, okay, so I, I have an argument with you, right, Che? Yeah. You say mean things to me, I say mean things yeah. to you again. I walk away from there saying, but yeah, but I wasn't as mean as him. He was really mean to me. Yeah, because we're wow. not in your shoes, we can't see how mean, uh, I can't see how mean I was right. to you. So, uh, we always perceive that the other person has done us more wrong yeah. than we have we're done to them. We're justify yeah. our wrong. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's right. So we're very good at that. So these these are the reasons why people... It, it, and most of all, it's about like that sense of hurt. We always constantly yeah. reference to our past. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And if in the past we have been hurt a lot, that builds up what I call like a gestalt of hurt. Mm. All right. So which the sum of its parts, uh, the, 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 the sum of total mm. is stronger, stronger than, than yeah. its parts. Right? right. So if you that keeps on building out that sense of hurt, that sense of having been you know wronged and all yeah. that, that just carries on and it becomes harder and harder to forgive. Mm -hmm. So the longer you hold on to your unforgiveness, the harder it's going to be to let it go. Wow. Yeah. And how does holding it back actually affect our quality of life? Mm. Well, again, you, you mentioned it earlier. First mm -hmm. of all, it's going to affect our mental and physical health. Mm. So what happens, uh, unforgiveness is like a stress response. Okay. It's the fight or flight response because it's, it's a reaction to what we perceive to be a threat. Mm. Yeah. Okay, that, that's meant to hurt us from an aggressor. Mm. So, you know, in that response, it's fight or flight. So either mm. we stand there and fight or we run away, which is what a lot of people do. They, mm. If they stand and fight, sometimes I feel it's better to stand there and in a very sort of rational, graceful way to tell the other party, look, yep. this is not yeah. on, you've hurt me, and then you're able to let go and walk away. But a lot of people, and, and this happens like when I go and do training and say, why don't you give people your feedback on this? Mm. Oh, cannot, he's my boss, you know, he'll put me in cold storage, you know, yeah. or or he'll persecute me and all right. that. And I'm like, you know, but you can have a rational way of telling people yeah. things. So what happens is they walk away, they go into avoidance mode, but all these feelings of anger yeah. and hurt are all yeah. stewing up and then it builds up and it builds up. And yeah. when that happens, your health is going to be affected. Now studies have shown one of the things that happens when you're in constant stress, you know, like mm. unforgiveness is that it affects your musculoskeletal system, okay. right? So then you'll get muscle aches and all that. Yeah. You oh. get um, bone pains. That's a proverb that says that you know keeping all these emotions inside actually eats away at the bones mm, so yeah. what is the bone the bone is the source of your immunity it's exactly. where your red blood cells white yeah. blood cells and all that are produced yeah. so if your bones dry up right, it sort of dries up your bones mm. what happens is your immunity will go down okay right. 
And also, when this happens, your internal or organs will be affected. Blood flow is cut down to your internal organs and your okay. cells. Mm. So what also happens is that the process of detoxification, toxins are built up. It, it, you know, your, your blood circulation reduces, toxins mm. are built up. Now, toxins, when they build up in certain organs, can actually trigger off um, yeah. cancers and other illnesses mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's not only that it's also your mental health that's affected well, you know, it's far-reaching it's very oh, far-reaching yeah. i mean I've, I've done a lot of you know coaching with people who come to me with health issues then you you go back and you go back and you find out that it's unforgiveness now i myself yeah. learned a valuable lesson mm -hmm. because i've been having a particular kind yeah. of recurring illness for a long time okay. and i went through all my medical checkups and doctors mm -hmm. said nothing is wrong okay. so finally i said okay i need, I'm, I'm, i've checked it out at the physical level i need to look at the emotional and the yeah. spiritual level so i i went to see um, my pastor you know for okay. prayer and she said who are you angry with first question who are you angry with who are you keeping unforgiveness towards and i'm like whoa you know it was like a slap in my yeah. face here i am talking about unforgiveness and i do have an ability to mm -hmm. forgive but this one thing that i've been holding on to then the minute i let it go mm -hmm the medical problem went away. So, I mean, yeah, yeah I, people yeah. might say, really, this is so extreme. But the fact of the matter is, whatever goes on inside our mind, it manifests in our it, it emotions, it manifests through our bodies. Mm -hmm. Right. And right? You know, it's, it's amazing that you say, we never knew how, we think it's a small thing, forgiveness, yeah. but it, it actually could be life-threatening, as you said. It could. But, you know, does forgiving someone actually make an offense acceptable? Like, for example, uh, a person who's wronged you for all your life, could be a family member. You know, and and turns out that you forgiving them actually gives them that leeway to take advantage of you. Well, you forgiving them, and if they want to take advantage of you, they can only do it if you allow it. You mm -hmm. need to have very clear boundaries. Forgiving someone doesn't mean letting them get away with the consequences of their mm. actions. Now, I'll give you an extreme case: if someone has murdered a loved one, yeah. right? You forgive him for your own good. But he still has to go to jail, no? He still has to go yeah. to a trial. You're not going to say, okay, now go forth and work free because that he needs to deal with his yeah. anger, mm. which will cause him to go and do it with someone else. So if someone has, if someone has, like, say, owed, cheated yeah. you, owed you money, mm -hmm. and you forgive him, mm. doesn't mean he doesn't have to pay you back, no? Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. You would still want him to pay you yeah. back. So people need to learn that they cannot simply do something wrong and then go and say, can you forgive me and then get away in with it. In a way, repeat the Repeatedly. Faith, right? yeah. Yeah. If they are doing that in a way to you, you are allowing it. Mm. So draw the boundary. Say, like, I really I forgive you for mm. what you have done, yeah. but we're never going to be in a situation again like this which allows you to do that to me. Yep. Right. Wow. And I think when, when dealing with the topic of forgiveness, one of the most famous lines we hear is to forgive and forget. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, in my case, more often <laughs> than not, I do forgive, but you know, you always remember the case. Do you actually forgive someone if you don't forget? Um, okay. I think um, you need to remember. Okay. For, when you say forgive and forget, mm -hmm. it's like probably forget the emotion mm. forget how thinking about what that person has done summons up the, those mm. emotions yeah. inside of you that's what you want to forget but you don't really want to forget that whole lesson that you can take from that again i bring back okay so jay if i go into business with you let's yeah. say all right yeah. i do business and then you've invested in my business and all that then after that i cheat you and i run away yeah. okay right. in the long term it's you're going to stew in it for a while but yeah. after a while you're going to say you know what i'm just going to forgive her okay so you say okay Sheila I forgive you yeah. and then I come back like one year later and say hey Jay I'm starting another business an yeah. investor are you going to invest no, no right surely you're going to remember that yeah. lesson yeah. that okay this one I don't think is a wise <laughs> yeah. investment so in that context um, you want to remember the lessons mm. you take from that entire uh, situation, mm. what, whatever happened between you and the other yeah. person. All right. So if, if let's say in a, a case of a, a wife is abused by her yeah. husband, mm. she moves on, she forgives him. Yep. All right, but it doesn't mean that you know if her yeah. life is being threatened by him, yeah. she's going to go back there and say, okay, let's go back, yeah. and you exactly. know, yeah. unless he has dealt with his issues yeah. and is a as a new person. Yeah, but there are yeah. two different spectrums here to look at. You know, uh, mm. there's being labeled a pushover, you know, at times, and also just holding a grudge altogether. Mm. How do we draw the balance? Again, I say it has to do with boundaries. So if mm. someone does something wrong to me, um, I forgive them. Mm. I move on. Okay. All right, I move on and the question is whether I want to continue to have a relationship with that person. If that person now respects my boundaries, yeah. all right, that I have set, yeah. 
mm. for us to continue the relationship they respect it yep. i continue with the relationship but if they do not respect those boundaries and they want to trespass yep. again um, then i'm going to have to make the decision and say you know what yeah. this is not going to be a productive mm. relationship for me it's, it's continuously stirring yeah. up these negative feelings so if you're not respecting my boundaries then you know i, I just get to move and on. that's the case when right. people wrong you and more often they just say sorry just out of courtesy yeah. and, you mm. know isn't really a re actual sorry itself is that right. what you do you know the boundaries that you've drawn and then you check the boundaries itself yeah, you check the boundaries and, and the thing is if you want to if you want to apologize it should be sincere because yeah. if you're coming to me and say ah, sorry yeah, Sheila and you really don't mean yeah. it, I'm gonna tell from your physiology that it's just like one eye wash, you know what yeah, I mean? And right. not but of course again then the choice is up to me as to whether I want to accept it or not. If I always say if someone comes to me with an apology, mm -hmm. no matter how his apology is presented, whether he's sincere or not, I'm not gonna question say, Hey, you really are you're not sincere, I can see if you're physical. <laughs> I'm going to just say, yeah. okay, fine, because I'm going to be gracious. Yeah. I'm going to behave in an emotionally yeah. intelligent way, even if the other party doesn't, or mm. he's got, uh, what do you call it, a agenda behind his yeah. apology. It doesn't matter. Right. If he's mm -hmm. given it to me, I will just take it at face value. Yeah. Okay. You know, But I will still maintain the lessons learned. I will still have my boundaries. And be on guard in that sense. Yeah. Right, you know, but you, you, it's interesting you mentioned that, but you know, we, we would all like to know how can I... Or how can we handle residual sadness and anger um, mm. that comes up even after you know you feel you truly feel that you've forgiven someone? Mm. The, yeah. O okay. Let me just explain to you that negative emotions are stored in different gestalts. Okay. All right. So anger is stored like one string of pearls. Okay. okay? So just imagine anger is a red a string of red beads, okay. red pearls. Okay, sadness is a string of blue pearls. Yeah. Fear is a string of black pearls. Okay, so they're all different. Okay, so in order to remove each of these negative emotions, you got to remove them one by one. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, we, for me, I do a process which is called timeline therapy where I go back and deal with the root cause. Oh. So dealing with the unforgiveness, you get rid of the gestalt of unforgiveness, mm -hmm. okay? But... Um, and usually unforgiveness is with one particular person or yeah. scenario. Yeah. But that unforgiveness, that scenario might have caused a build up of, build up of anger and sadness yeah. and all that, which yeah. then you have to deal with the root cause for those. But yeah. at the same time, having said that, if you're doing it on your own, then what you need to do is constant release. Constantly uh -huh. release. And for me, I have found one very positive way yeah. of doing this is to wish well on the other person, the person concerned, uh -huh. oh. to wish them well and to actually bless them. I mean, if you're praying, yeah. to actually pray, it's very, very hard. I can tell you yeah. this. But once you start the process of doing it, yeah. it's like a skill. Anything that you start doing yeah. and do continuously yeah. becomes easier. Well, and would you say that, you know, what you just mentioned, you know, that, you know, you you pray for the best for them at the end of the day. Yeah. Would you say that's one of the hallmarks when you know that you've truly forgiven someone? Yeah, I think, yeah, it is. But you might still have residual yeah. anger and things. But as you yeah. keep doing it, keep doing it and wishing them well, you are actually going through the process of letting go. Mm. So, right. yeah. Uh, you know, one of the biggest, I think, battles that people face these days, apart from, you know, forgiving other people, is also trying to forgive them themselves. Mm. You know, uh, why do you think that is? Because over the years, we again, we build up a gestalt of mm. guilt. Yeah. Starting from, you know, the root cause when we were mm. small, we made to feel guilty about uh, maybe displeasing our parents yeah. and as you go along. So when that builds up, guilt is there. So one of the things why we find it difficult to mm. forgive ourselves is guilt. Another one is because of disappointment in ourselves. We all set standards for ourselves and we fall short of that in behaviour or in anything. We yeah. find it hard to mm. forgive ourselves. It's also about control. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I want to control how I deal with my guilt. I don't want somebody else coming and telling me that uh, I should forgive and things yeah, like that. Right. Mm. But, you know, are there any techniques in which, yeah. you know, we could, we could learn to enhance, to not just forgive others, but also ourselves? Are there techniques or practices that we could, you know, do? Forgiving yourself is actually a conscious choice. Mm -hmm. And you tell yourself that guilt is not, a productive emotion now of all the negative emotions yeah. there's reasons for fear and anger you know it's fight yeah. or flight yeah. okay but guilt is the most unproductive emotion of all because it holds you back yeah. so, so you got to tell yourself okay i did something that was wrong mm. 
Mm. I hurt someone. I'm going to go and take yeah. the steps to apologize yeah. to them, ask for their forgiveness. Then again, if they they give you the forgiveness, they say, okay, I forgive you, right? Then um, take it, accept yeah. it as a gift. If they say, no, I cannot forgive you, then it's okay still because you did the right thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. You go and then you make a conscious effort to let it go yeah. and, and not stew in your own guilt. That's your self-forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Forgiving other people, it's about, first of all, when you forgive someone else, don't have any expectations. Okay. Don't have expectations that they're going to then, um, after that, behave in a wonderful way towards you. <laughs> but with you. human nature itself, that's a lot easier said than done, yeah. isn't it? So how do we deal with that? Deal with? The expectation itself. Yeah. You just have to let go of expectations. Now, in life, right, mm -hmm. if you keep expecting people to do things or behave in a yeah. certain way, mm. you're just setting yourself for up misery. for disappointment. Okay. All right, so just have to respect that different people have different ways of behaving. Mm -hmm, exactly. Behind mm. every behavior of every human being is a positive intention. All right, so that there's a, I'm going to just read this, okay, in the Thirukkural, mm, yeah. okay, which is written by Thiruvalluvar. He said, you consider a man's great qualities yeah. and you consider his faults. Okay. You judge his character by that which is more. Mm. Okay. All right. So, if someone hurts you once, okay, are you gonna stew? Oh, okay, could have been a big thing that did. Are yeah. you gonna stew in it? And uh, after that, you know, they they yeah. try spend their life making it up to you. Yeah. Right. Are you going to continue to focus on that one glaring so fault? True. Yeah. yeah. Right. So first of all, you got to have no expectation that people thereafter are going to behave in the way you want. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then you need to actually sit down and face. A lot of people mm. go into avoidance. I push it away because I don't want to think about yeah. it. You got to sit down and ask yourself, what has this person done and how it makes me feel? Write a letter. Right. Write a letter to the person. Okay. Or oh, keep wow. a diary of that. You write a letter to the person. You don't have to send it if you don't want to. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, the person is dead a bit hard to send, you know, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you don't have to send it if you want to. But right. writing it out, is it's a, a catharsis. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So it gets it out. And wow. if you want, you know, if, if you feel that you want to repair that relationship, mm. that it means something to you, then send it out. Set up a meeting okay. with that okay. person. But before you do that, you know, and, and I've talked about it in the show right. before, it's like what we call the perceptual positions. You know how you feel? Get into a neutral position and re-examine that whole mm. scenario that happened from a neutral perspective. Mm. All right. Yeah. Even your own yeah. self, what you did, what you yeah. said. Yeah. Right? And it's interesting that you mentioned right. that. Because Seeing the bigger picture. <laughs> Seeing the bigger picture, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Then then get into the other person's seat. So maybe you can actually set up three chairs. This is mm. what I, when okay. I do with people coaching. I set up three mm. chairs. This is your chair. How do you feel? Mm. Go into the neutral position, the bigger picture, as you say. Then go and sit in the other person's chair and try and get empathize with them. Mm. How did they feel? What did you say that right. made them feel that way? How did they react that Put way? ourselves in their shoes. In that That's yeah. right. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. So that you're getting their perspective yeah. okay. and understanding what could have been mm. the intention yeah. they wanted by that, you yeah. know, that for that course, behavior. You know, it all starts, it begins with us itself, you know. Yeah. Thank you very much, Sheila, for yeah. taking your time and speak, <laughs> speaking to us welcome. today. This you know, this is, yeah, is you something know, that people struggle with a lot. Yeah, mm. it, it, she said she's shed so much of light here. So how I'm going to approach life. Yeah. You know, in fact, it, it could start right now because i got six days before Christmas. I don't want to be doing it on, on Christmas, Christmas Eve or Christmas so, yeah. Day. You know, of course, there's so much. So start uh, setting up your chairs then, you know, <laughs> just see the bigger picture the itself, you know. But of course, we have a whole lot more V-Buzz in store tomorrow. Yeah. We find out how the Locks of Hope Association is helping cancer patients deal with the traumatic side effects of chemotherapy. Now, we'll also be speaking to Serena Zara Taufik, mm. a young change-making social entrepreneur who's made making a difference in the community. Brilliant. And coffee lover Roshan finally <laughs> gets his dream come true as we sent him out to learn how to make the perfect cup of joe at a coffee workshop with the Barista Guild Asia. Very lucky fella. <laughs> now keep writing to us at vibas at astro.com. Don't mind. Do follow us on Instagram at vibas underscore HD at all times for all the latest on vibas, of course. Exactly. And hopefully you guys had an informative show. I know oh. we certainly did. From me, Jay Walia. So and Ruben, it's bye-bye for now. We'll see you again tomorrow. Good night.